Welcome to On Time in Half the Time, Part 1. Thanks for joining the course. We really appreciate it and hope you find it interesting, enjoyable, and most importantly, that you learn a lot. Simplified drum buffer rope is an incredibly powerful approach to improving manufacturing performance and creating a competitive advantage. Companies that use SDBR are able to reduce their manufacturing lead time by over 50% and improve due date performance into the high 90s. And this is just the start of the benefits of adopting the SDBR method. The approach is simple and intuitive to use and can be implemented quickly and with relatively little effort. This unit introduces the course and explains how it works. Specifically, I will explain what you can expect to learn during this course, how the course is structured and works, what the course is not able to do and what you should do at the end of this unit. OK, so what are you going to learn on this course? Well, there are a number of learning objectives you should achieve by completing the course. Firstly, the theory of constraints is a wide body of knowledge covering a number of functional disciplines, industries and other areas. In Module 1, I will explain where simplified drum buffer rope fits within the wider context of the theory of constraints. Secondly, you will understand by the end of Module 2 why high inventory manufacturing environments have long lead times and poor due date performance, and experience a whole host of other problems. You'll also learn about some of the common beliefs about how to make manufacturing efficient that actually achieve the opposite and end up losing you money. Specifically, I'm going to look at the efficiency syndrome, economic order quantities, minimum order quantities and saving setups. They're all very common in manufacturing, but as practices, they are fundamentally misconceived. In Module 3, I will explain why simplified drum buffer rope is actually simplified and simplified from what. I'll explain each of the four assumptions SDBR makes, those being, firstly, that the market is the constraint, secondly, that there may be a capacity constrained resource, but not necessarily, and thirdly, that touch time is less than 10% of the elapsed time, and lastly, that we only need to use one buffer. Just as importantly, I will explain where you should not try to use SDBR. In the fourth module, I will explain each of the four key elements of SDBR, and I will start with the first element that we introduce in an implementation, choking the release of raw material. The choking mechanism drains inventory from the plant and keeps inventory low in the long term. This in turn reduces the manufacturing lead time and improves due date performance. I'll also explain how the buffer management priority system works to guide work centres to work on the right work order at the right time, further reducing lead times and improving due date performance. After explaining the first two elements of SDBR, we will examine what happens in the early stages of an SDBR implementation. I will demonstrate using a small graphical model why inventory reduces dramatically, queues disappear from the plant, how lead time shrinks significantly and the due date performance improves rapidly. Then, our attention will turn to the subject of capacity-constrained resources. CCRs, as they're known, are not bottlenecks. They're just resources that struggle to keep up with demand due to limited protective capacity. I will demonstrate 12 practical ways in which you can substantially increase capacity at the CCR without investing significant amounts of money. Finally, I will also explain how to use the SDBR approach to create a rapid, effective and sustainable process of ongoing improvement. In Module 5, I will summarise the key learning points from the course and give you a plan of action to help you continue your development in the theory of constraints. The course is structured around five modules and there are several units within each of those modules. The modules obviously relate to the learning objectives discussed on the previous slide, so I won't repeat what I just told you. All you need to do for now is to take note of the module titles here, and if you want to understand how each of the units fits within the modules, look at the next slide or in the unit notes. This slide provides a full itemised list of the five modules and each of the units within those modules. I intend to add frequently asked questions units to each of the modules as participants on the course ask questions, so as to provide an easy and fast way to clarify any queries that you may have. Keep an eye out for this development and I will be sure to notify participants as the additional units are added. I will also update you on any other developments with the course so that you don't miss out on anything. OK, let's now discuss how the course actually works. The course follows a logical sequence with the units building upon each other. 
Therefore, it is really important that you follow the correct sequence through the units and the modules. No jumping around. Simply work through each module and unit, moving from the top of the list on the previous slide to the bottom, and you can't go wrong. Each unit has its own web page, and on each page you will find a consistent and easy to navigate structure. Each unit has the following sections. Firstly, an introduction which contains a brief summary of what the unit or module is about. Secondly, what you should do gives you a list of clear and simple instructions to follow. The learning objectives detail what you should understand by the end of the unit. The video presentation contains the content of the unit and unit notes are used to provide additional guidance or emphasize key points of the content. Some units have assignments which are designed to deepen and consolidate your learning from the course. None of the assignments in the course is compulsory, but we recommend you engage in each as this will enrich your learning experience and improve your understanding of the SDBR approach. You can submit your answers to each assignment on the unit page, and if appropriate, I will provide feedback there are obviously limitations to what this course can achieve. It is an educational course designed to teach participants about SDBR. It cannot and does not substitute for expert consulting advice on how to implement SDBR in your factory and you should not treat this course as such. I am sure you will understand that we cannot accept any liability for any actions you may take as a result of participating in the course. However, if you wish to engage with an expert in SDBR or any other area of the theory of constraints, we would be delighted to help you, or at least point you in the direction of someone who can. And I cannot stress enough how important this is. If you wish to implement SDBR, as we would almost always recommend, your results will typically be much greater and more quickly achieved by engaging a consultant who has experience of multiple implementations. The return on your investment should be considerable and quickly realized. The final unit, M144, has information on how you can do this or you can simply email me at info at drathan.com. Okay, that covers the key points for the first unit. I recommend that you reread the learning objectives for the course, which are below this video, and then read through the unit notes. When you've done that, check that you have satisfied the learning objectives for this unit. Then click the button that says mark this unit complete at the bottom of the web page, and this will tell the site that you have completed the unit. Then click the next unit button to go to the second unit and enjoy the course.